Props to my boys Dynasty for kicking it with us this weekend. We'll see more of them in the next few games, but now back to our match. So Purdue scoring that first quick point. UConn needs to get something going here. Let's see their breakout. Oh, again, UConn going down to the center 50 right behind the A. So UConn making it up to that center 50. Purdue didn't decide to do that. They had a pretty conservative breakout, but then move all the way on the Dorito side, but he gets shot. Yeah, we got Costa shooting down to the uh, snake side. Oh, we got the first elimination from UConn taking him out in the center 50. So one elimination for both teams right now. It's going to be a battlefield position. You know, as, we, as we see UConn working on that Dorito side, he makes a move up into up into the next yellow Dorito, shooting cross field, trying to work those cross field shots, paying balls, a game of angles. It's all about getting up into those important bunkers, look cross field, and getting those shots. Right, Purdue now in the snake. And here you're watching UConn trying to shoot as much as possible, always staying in the game with his face forward. Now both teams right now kind of sizing up their opponent. Oh, referee. Referee pulling a penalty on a Purdue player right there. Oh, and he's taking another one out of the center back. That's going to hurt Purdue in this game point. Oh, and there goes Potter out of the Dorito side. So and another elimination on UConn. So eliminations falling off both sides of the field. Penalty was assessed on Purdue. That's not going to help him out at this point as we see UConn seizing the opportunity, getting across the snake. Right, right now we're watching the snake tape. Purdue shooting down. They're both facing each other. They're looking across field right now try to look for some shots. I don't think he knows exactly who's on the other side. And that's where the coaching definitely comes in handy as the coaches stand right on that snake tape. And you see the coach walking to his, we're running to his player, trying to let him know what's going on. And in the snake, UConn trying to get an angle. They, I think they finally figured out that there's only one Purdue player yeah. left. There is, and Zaleski right here in the Dorito, and he's trying to make his way down past now in the red zone, and now they're pushing down the field on Purdue's side, and it looks like that Purdue is going to lose this point against UConn. Zaleski going up to that corner, and they take out that last guy, making that final elimination. All thanks to Zaleski finishing up that game. So great job by UConn getting right back in this game. After that first point loss to Purdue, Great yeah. job by Costa on that snake side. You know, he's playing smart over there, being It's really important on that snake side because it's so wide open that if, on the breakout, you're not going to get to the snake necessarily off the break. So you got to play calm, you got to play smart, and then make that bump when the time is right. Costa, perfect example of that, works his bunker, gets into snake one efficiently, and then finally closes the door on Purdue here. Gross major for your wife. Gross major? That's what happens when you wipe you're out. This just in from the referees on the field. There was a penalty assessed for wiping a hit on Purdue. That's a major penalty. Purdue's going to have to play a man down. They're going to have to play with four players. Yeah, that's going to be point tough. B. That's always tough, you know? Yeah. And, and, and you really want to get and score as many points as possible on that power play. So there was a lot of chaos on that last point. We sorted it out, though. It was a gross penalty on the Purdue player. A five-minute gross penalty was assessed. So that player it cannot play for 10 minutes. And they have to play down a body for 340 left on that penalty. Well, that's going to be difficult for Purdue, but you never know. If they play their cards right and try to stay alive, they can Something definitely pull Something wrong with the UConn player's gun, so now they got four players. Oh, and he's got it. See, he's trying to get it working. Now he's got it working. So it's three on five right now. Purdue losing a, a player. So UConn needs to take advantage of this and try to score points as quick as possible and run up the score. It's all tied up right now. 7-10 left in this first half. Yeah, because it's three on four right now. Yeah. UConn four, Purdue oh, he's three. We see, we see UConn yelling. Oh, and he's got his gun all apart. He's trying to figure out what's going on with his gun. He's trying to load it. You know, basically the reason why he did that is because of the hopper. It had a situation where it jammed some balls, so we had to take it off and dump out that paint. UConn. Well, look, look at this beat. Right now it's three on three as Purdue quickly evens it up. UConn trying to be a little bit too aggressive, get shot out of the bunkers. Yeah, that definitely can be a distraction when you got some gun issues. But again, it's a three on three situation. You know, Purdue's really doing well considering that they have to play with a man down. Well, it's gut check time, you know? When somebody on your team screws you over by getting a major penalty, you really gotta kinda look at yourself and be like, all right, I'm gonna go and win this next point. And we see right now UConn looking over the bunker. Matt, he's making a move. Yeah, that's Potter over there. Potter making a move to the first Dorito. He's back on his player. So right now UConn heavy on this Dorito side. Wow, UConn three on three still. 
They're, they're trying to figure it out. They got two players right here on the Dorito side. They have decent field position, though, B. Yeah, they, they do. They have Snake One, and they have the real strong presence over here on this tree. There's no one up that center, so they got to be real careful not to get television down the wires. Yep. And it's and and, and it's uh, UConn now still pushing down the snake. Move there into the 50 snake from UConn. You see him trying to work his cross field shots. That's the whole point. You get into that 50 snake. Uh, court, you have to look cross field. And we see Potter back at his boy Dan up here for UConn getting into that that red 50 yard line Dorito. Yeah, Zaleski always seems to find himself there towards the end of the game. Yeah, Zaleski, he means business. He's handling business over there. Oh, UConn losing a player out of that snake 50. Oh. So Purdue battling back, and not only that, they're taking so much time off of this penalty, only a minute 22 left. You know, that's Purdue's just trying to feel this out, and now here, see so if you're watching Purdue, he's trying to make his move down the second, then, then he does, here he goes, he's running down the Dorito, trying to shoot out Zaleski, facing it off, so right in front of each other, here comes Purdue, number 13. Oh, great move by 13 from Purdue, taking Zaleski down, oh, uh, Zaleski's going to have to wipe those, those welts there on his back, that's got to hurt a little bit. Nice. So Purdue pulling this point out. Awesome play by Purdue. Yeah, that was pretty significant, Maddie. I mean, they started out with a man down. They only have 45 seconds left. And you know what? That was well executed by Purdue because of the fact that they knew that they had to do that. And you can see right now he's just walking slowly, the Purdue player, because he's trying to, again, take as much time off of that gross penalty. Right. It was assessed early. Great job by Purdue. That was a gut check right there. That was clutch play. Two to one, 4.31 left here in the first half of our first semifinal matchup. We're gonna head to a break, but do not go anywhere. We got some more intense paintball action coming at you right after this. It's 2.53 a.m. Uh, we're getting ready to leave for Dallas. Do you know what happened to this team? You didn't come to Nashville? Yeah, we're kind of blue like when did you brought? You don't know which way we're getting on. What is going on here? I swear it. Oh, 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 uh, our captain oh, almost oh, lost all his gear at the airport. Yeah, I was Dean Zaleski. We just got back from the airport. Now we're going to check out the field, so. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, 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 Dude. Good morning. We're all up. Pretty good. Morning. First uh, game in 12 o'clock. So the van's too full, and we don't have room for everybody's gear bag, so the kids who aren't playing, I think we're just going to make them leave their stuff here. Game like this, and it comes with broken up into two pieces there. So we just finished up for our first day. Um, we played Texas A&M first, and we had kind of a rough game. Uh, we lost to them 6-4. to four. It came out kind of sloppy, but um, we fixed our breakout, and um, we stopped losing guys out of their bunkers. And we closed up pretty strong, even though we came out weak, and uh, we're hoping to do it again tomorrow. Well, the defending champs are having a blast here in Texas, but it's serious now. They're in a close match against a real tough Purdue team. We're gonna take a look at the replay here. Awesome breakout by Purdue, keeping all their bodies alive. And we see UConn's breakout, but you know what? It was not the breakout that won or lost it for Purdue. Purdue, a lot of clutch play. As you see UConn, it had a little bit of gun problems, so right away, they gained their advantage. And we're heading back to the action, next point. Under 30 seconds left on that gross penalty. Purdue had pulled out that point. So the score two to one right now is we're under five minutes in the first half of play of our first semifinal matchup, Purdue taking on UConn. Yep, and in less than 17 seconds now, you better watch the penalty box because Purdue's fifth player is gonna try to take the field. So, they, so he's gonna try to get out of that penalty box alive, and UConn right now should be searching for shots on that penalty box. That's right. Well, you know what? Purdue did have an elimination, so they do have three players left on Purdue, and now we're going to see Purdue trying to make it out of the penalty box right now. And there you see the lanes. And there he goes. Dorito player trying to shoot at the Purdue player exiting the penalty box, but he makes it out alive. A little bit of confusion. A little bit of confusion, but then they get it together. Purdue stomping up this Dorito side again. Yeah, UConn now with two eliminations, so there's only three players left on UConn's side. Now Purdue in the yellow and black jerseys, UConn in the blue and yellow jerseys. Dominant field position right now for Purdue over here on the street side. You can see UConn getting pinched out as Purdue number 13 making his move into the red zone. Yeah, that's, that's Ryan Jasper. 
shooting across the field from the Dorito red zone as he's trying to shoot out that center back bunker. So now, right now, it's three on three, but better field position for Purdue because they have, you know, they have guys up on this Dorito side. And if you're just going to let them stomp on this Dorito side, it's going to be really hard for UConn to compete. Very close game still. Yeah, Purdue just making a shift out to the snake tape closer to his coach. Now, I'll tell you what there, I was just going to say, Purdue just basically needs to start wrapping and going. Put a guy in and go. You have this whole side. The only thing that's going... There, oh, there goes UConn, but I think he just got eliminated. Let's see if he did indeed make it into the snake. No, nope, he's in snake one. The referee's going to get in there and check him out. Looks and like he's, he's alive. And you see him, he's searching cross field for shots. He's trying to pick up those real players. And that's always helpful. When you can get to that snake team, you can be closer to your coach and you can hear the communication coming from him. And there it comes. 13 moving up again on that onto UConn's side of the field. And now he's just hiding right now because he has to. And then the UConn player making a move over to that back at Blue Aztec, trying to get a better angle. Yeah, that, that really puts Ryan Jasper or Purdue in a bad position because he's got to worry about the guy in the snake. That's about to shoot him right now. There's UConn right there in the snake. So again, these two great teams. I mean, we're seeing some really good games well, between this got these two teams. Oh, look at this. The bunker from UConn as he takes out Ron Jasper and also the guy right behind him. And that's Costa again. So Costa taking the first guy down and then trading out with the second guy. So Paul Costa is going to win that point for UConn. Awesome yeah. job by the rookie Costa stepping it up. So UConn getting right back in this match, so it's going to be all tied up 2-2. Two to two. Wow, great smart play, B. Yeah, definitely. Very smart paintball by both these teams. They definitely came to win. Well, let's check out this replay now as we go back into the game where that bunkering came from. UConn checking it out, and he sees his move. Coming up to Ryan Jasper, taking him out, and he's trying to move forward to Juan Bazadas Cruz. So as time runs out here in the first half of our first semifinal matchup, the score, UConn 2, Purdue 2, it's anyone's ball game right now. Well, you're watching the 2007 JTUSA College Paintball National Championships right here on Fox College Sports.